Let's go. Jumbo friends, my name is Andrew and I will be your safari guide today. If you look above your heads, you will see an animal spotting guide. I can't promise that we'll be able to see everything on that list, but we do tend to have some pretty good luck out here. Before we head out onto the reserve, I do want to remind you all to remain seated with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the truck at all times. This does include the little ones. They can either be in your lap or in the seat next to you. Please do not lift up your children or pass them back and forth. It can get pretty bumpy out here, and I do not want anybody getting hurt. So whichever seat you are sitting in right now is your seat for the entire safari. We are entering all of these animals' homes, so please do not call out to the animals or make any sort of loud noises. This will scare the animals and they will move further away from the truck. There is absolutely no eating, drinking, or smoking of any kind. We are out on the reserve today. Right now, we are entering the Little Itchery Forest, which is home to a few of our animal friends who are a little bit more on the shyer side, so sometimes they are a little bit harder to spot. Coming up on our left, it looks like there are a few bongo. Both male and female bongo have horns, so one way to tell them apart is the males will have a little bit of a darker fur coat than the females. Bongo are so rarely seen out in the wild that they've earned themselves the nickname the Ghost of the Forest. Over on our right, there are a few okapi. A lot of people think that the okapi is a relative of the zebra because of its striped legs, but they are actually a relative of the giraffe. They have a similar skull shape as well as a long prehensile tongue that they use to rip leaves off of branches. The okapi was only discovered back in the early 1900s. We've only known of their existence for around the last hundred years or so. Coming up on our left, on the edge of the water, that does look like there is a saddle build stork. Saddle build stork get their name from the yellow spot on the top of their bill that kind of looks like a saddle. They do not have any vocal cords, so instead how they communicate is by rattling their bills together. Also on our left there is a black rhino. Black rhinos are one of the smaller species of rhino, weighing in at around 3,000 pounds when they are fully grown. These rhinos are usually solitary creatures, so that means that they like to live on their own. Right now we are headed over to the Safi River. The Safi River is home to a few of our animal friends who are a little bit more on the aquatic side, so that means that they like to live in the water. Coming up on our right, it does look like there are a few pink-backed pelicans. Pink-backed pelicans get their name from the wow. pink color that they turn during mating season. These birds are colonial nesters, so that means that they like to nest in groups. These specific birds will nest in groups of about 20 to 500 pairs out in the wild. Sometimes in the river we can spot some hippos. Hippos do like to sink all the way down to the bottom of the river and walk along the river floor. They can usually hold their breath for around 8 minutes, so they can be down there for quite a while. And a group of hippos is called a bloat. species of crocodilian in Africa, reaching lengths of around 16 feet long, making around 500 pounds. They say they can eat around half of their weight in the This is called a baobab tree. It's also known as an upside down tree. It gets that nickname because for about nine months out of the year, they do not have any leaves on their branches, so it looks like they're growing upside down. Right now, we are heading down to the savannah. The savannah is home to a few of our animal friends who rely a little bit more on their speed for survival, so they need lots of big open areas in order to run. Over on our right, it does look like there are a few giraffe. These are Maasai giraffe. Giraffes are the tallest land mammals on the planet, reaching heights of around 18 feet when they are fully grown. When giraffe are born, they're already around six feet tall, and a group of giraffes is called a tower. 
Giraffe only need about 30 minutes of sleep a day, and that 30 minutes does not need to be consecutive. So they will take a bunch of short power naps throughout the day, and that's all the sleep that they need. Over on our left, it looks like there are a few painted dogs. Painted dogs are one of the most successful hunters in the entire animal kingdom, with a success rate of around 90% when they go out on their hunts. Over on our left, there are a few sable antelope. Sables are one of the fiercer species of antelope known to occasionally find a lot of lions in the wild. does it like there are a few wildebeest. Wildebeest can travel in herds of around one and a half million during their great migration. It's been said that in years past they've kicked up such a large dirt and dust cloud that it was able to be seen from the International Space Station. On our right, it looks like there is an eland. Eland are the largest species of antelope here on the savannah. Males can weigh around 2,000 pounds when they are fully grown. During mating season, male eland will put flowers and other foliage into their horns, making almost a flower crown in hopes of attracting a mate. Judging by all of these knocked over trees and branches, I'd say we're getting pretty close to elephant country. Looks like there are a few more elephants, maybe even an entire herd of elephants. Elephant herds are matriarchal societies, so that means that the oldest female is the one who is in charge. She knows where all the best food is, where all the best water is, and anything else that the elephants may need. Elephant herds usually consist of mom elephants with their young. like there are a few flamingos. These are greater flamingos. They are the largest species of flamingo. does look like there are a few ostrich. Ostrich are the largest birds on the planet. Their eggs can weigh around three pounds, which is the equivalent to about 24 chicken eggs. Lots of villages will use them for their sweet milk as well as for the cheeses that they 